Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Last week we did an episode on Steam's in-home streaming feature. This week we have an update for you guys and it is all set up and working right here in front of me. So sit back, relax, and enjoy me showing you the latest weapon in the PC Master Race arsenal. So before we get started, we have some more information now that we didn't include last time. So number one is that in-home streaming doesn't allow higher resolutions than the monitor connected to the server computer. So if your monitor is 720p and your TV that you're trying to stream to is 1080p, you'll still only be able to stream at 720p unless you can use some fancy trickery to make your PC run at a higher resolution and then like downsample or something like that. The good news is that the opposite is not true. So 1080p on the streaming computer will stream to 720p or 1280 by you know, 1024 or whatever other resolution you could pretty much want. What matters most for performance of in-home streaming is the client computer's CPU performance. Nothing else really matters. I mean, of course, you're gonna have the gaming machine will actually have to have a powerful GPU and will have to deliver a playable frame rate, but CPU performance and the ability to decode the H.264 video stream that's coming in at the appropriate resolution and frame rate is pretty much all you need. So we're gonna do our live demo here for you guys. This D machine right here is actually our client computer. And so today we are streaming from Keys' editing rig that's running a GeForce GTX 760 and an Intel Core i7-4770 in Windows 7. And then this machine right here could be running pretty much anything for all you guys know, but we're looking for just, you know, we wanted the easiest, most optimal setup. So we got a Core i5 and a GTX 670 in here as well. We're using gigabit wired ethernet between these two systems via a switch. And basically what I would like to say about that is um, I've actually got a video about this as well. And I see a lot of people who are really, really confused about how the, the bandwidth link speed works, where they're saying, oh, well, I don't want to use up all of my internet bandwidth by using this feature. Guys, you won't be. It doesn't even support streaming over the internet. It's only your local network. This is something that there seem to be a lot of misconceptions about. I see people talking about, I don't need a wireless N or wireless AC router because my internet connection is only 20 megabit per second. Uh, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's fine. You want faster connectivity on your side before your connection to your ISP anyway for things like file transfers or for game streaming or stuff like that. So that's really important. Uh, the other thing I'd like to bring up, speaking of wireless, is that we are running gigabit ethernet for a reason. I have tried in-home streaming in a variety of configurations, including iFinity, 4K, wireless N um, single band, wireless N dual band, wireless AC, and the best experience is a wire connection, even if it's not a great wired connection, even a 10 hundred wired connection will give you fewer dropped frames from what I've seen so far than even, you know, a gigabit class AC wireless connection. Although that might change with some of the better wireless gear that I've recently got my hands on, as well as with that upcoming Linksys one that's actually pretty exciting. Now, guys, how well does it work? Great question. Thank you for asking that. If you're using one of the supported configurations that Valve actually says, you know, yes, this is something that we want you to do, such as 720p at 30 or 60 FPS or 1080p at 30 or 60 FPS, actually really, really well. Particularly if you're already used to gaming from the couch and using a wireless controller, the amount of extra latency added here, when you factor in that your TV is doing a bunch of processing and your wireless controller and all that stuff, it actually doesn't really feel any different to me. If you're playing Twitch shooters, I did notice a little bit more of a jittery feeling to it, but in terms of latency, actually not bad at all. Now, if you're using an unsupported configuration, like you're running iFinity or 4K or something like that, yeah, it's, it's terrible, it like hardly works, but it's just a beta and there will be time for Valve to continue to tune this amazing little Steam OS feature. So you can actually, oh, okay, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see it based on this, but we're actually running SteamOS here, not big picture. I kind of wanted to show you that, but don't worry too much about it. Thank you guys very much for watching the SteamOS in-home streaming update. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.